everybody. Welcome back. I'm here to wrap up the 2021 New Jersey Complete Street Summit. And if you don't know me, my name's Leanne Von Hagen. I'm the Managing Director at the Voorhees Transportation Center at Rutgers University. So if you were here this morning, we started with our moderator, Laura Torchio, reminding us that there is no such thing as a bike lane ferry. But I've got to say, after listening to all the great speakers today and all of these sessions, I can safely say we have a lot of people doing amazing work. So I'm wearing my tiara because I'm inspired to do more work by working with all of you. And we have made progress over the last decade. I really can't wait to see what the next 10, year bring, 10 years bring. Um, I think in the last 10 years, we have seen dramatic shifts in both our demographics and our climate. In the coming years, we can expect our neighbors and our communities to grow, um, but there also may be storms and flooding and more heat. We can also expect travel and transportation patterns to change due to more compact development patterns, online shopping, car and bike share, micro mobility devices and remote, remote work. And most importantly, we have seen in recent years how important streets are to the life of our communities and how they can provide new and creative ways for the public to share space. So New Jerseyans have always adapted to changing circumstances. It's only natural that our streets should adapt along with us. We need people like all of you to continue to be involved in your community to help build safer, more accessible and more resilient streets. So in the spirit of this year's 10 year retrospective, it is my great pleasure to introduce Barbara McCann from the Federal Highway Administration's Office of Safety. Barbara has previously led the USDOT's Safer People, Safer Streets initiatives for pedestrian and bicycle safety. And she was the founder of the National Complete Streets Coalition. Her work there engaged with a wide range of organizations, including American Planning Association, AARP, Bikes Belong, National Association of Realtors, Blue Cross Blue Shield, YMCA, Natural Resources Defense Council, and more. Under Barbara's direction, the council spawned a movement and influenced the passage of hundreds of Complete Streets policy across the country. In 2016, she was awarded the Association of Pedestrian and Bicycle Professionals Lifetime Achievement Award. And she's the author of Completing Our Streets, The Transition to Safe and Inclusive Transportation Networks. So I'm really excited. Barbara is here to, to talk with us today. I've known Barbara for many years, seen her speak many times, and it's nice to, to have her in our, our statewide conference today. So Barbara, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Leanne. It's, it's really is great to be here uh, virtually. I wish I were there in person as I'm sure we all do. Um, but it's it's wonderful to uh, to see the work that that you're doing and to, to be a part of your your celebration and your commitment to the future years. Uh, so so Leanne and Elise asked me to talk a little bit about the beginning of Complete Streets, which I will start with. Um, but then I want to talk a little bit about what I have learned from the progress that New Jersey has made uh, and also tell you a little bit about what we're doing at uh, Federal Highway uh, Administration. Uh, so as far as the beginning goes, I, I always tell people I first got the idea for Complete Streets back when I was living in Atlanta and I was trying to ride my bicycle in the mid-1990s. Uh, and uh, this was not always that easy. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if more of these roads had bike lanes and had good places to, to ride and to walk? Uh, when I came to Washington, D.C. to um, work in uh, transportation, I was doing some consulting for the League of American Bicyclists, and they wanted to rename what they used to call routine accommodation. Just kind of a wonky term, kind of engineer, sounds kind of engineering. Uh, wasn't really going over that well um, in the halls of Congress. Uh, so we came up with the term complete streets. Uh, and, but immediately, uh, I really knew that it was about more than bicycles. It was really about how do we make sure that the streets are safe for everyone who's using them um, by whatever method of travel they're using. Um, and it was, it's about both just basic safety and it's about networks, creating networks that work for, uh, for everyone. So you can walk out your door and get where you're going using a variety of, of different modes safely. Uh, and so right away uh, after we coined the term, 
I started to uh, build a coalition and, and Leanne named a few of the early members. A prominent member that I know has been active, very active in New Jersey and uh, has, was really part of that very first group and was one of the founding members was AARP. And so I wanna thank, uh, thank the folks from AARP for being so helpful in moving uh, the needle there in, in your state and around the country. Uh, and with that group, we founded the National Police Streets Coalition in 2005. Uh, and at first we were so excited. Every time anyone saw the term complete streets mentioned anywhere, we'd all email it around. Like, oh, listen, somebody said this. Um, and as the years went by, one of the really funny things was there was an article written that said, uh, just talking about complete streets, it said, no one knows where the term came from. And to me, that was such a great sign of success of the organic nature of all of the different groups, the planners, the engineers, the public health people, uh, uh, older adults, uh, disabled people. We had all these different groups uh, talking about it from all these different angles. And uh, that's really part of what, what uh, I think gave it its, gave it its power. Um, but right from the beginning, the first thing that we were doing was, that I was doing, um, was learning from places around the country. Okay, so we have this concept. Who's already doing this? This is like not completely rocket science. It's not totally a foreign idea. And so we looked for uh, proto policies. Uh, one of those proto policies was a Massachusetts uh, design guide, which came out in 2006. Uh, and uh, it was a very comprehensive document. And uh, I, I feel a little bit as if I've come a little full circle because now the acting administrator of the Federal Highway Administration is Stephanie Pollack. Uh, she spent the last six years leading the Massachusetts DOT uh, and really leading the complete streets policy that started back in 2006, leading it to maturity uh, in that state where they have more than 200 uh, local uh, agencies have policies and they have funding program and they really had great, uh, great success. Uh, so it's wonderful to be uh, working for her. She definitely knows more about it than I do at this point. Um, and uh, she's, bringing, she's bringing those years of experience, much like you all have years of experience uh, around uh, complete streets. And I wanted to say a little bit about what I've learned over the years um, working with uh, people in New Jersey. And I'm really pleased that it has been many years. Uh, the first place that I learned from was Montclair, which I think had the first policy or one of the very first policies in New Jersey. Uh, and what I learned there was how well uh, the local community engaged the elected officials in embracing the vision of Complete Streets, understanding what it meant, uh, and getting that, that just essential support that then supports the transportation agencies and everyone else in moving forward. Uh, another, one of the pieces of that was really documenting the economic benefits of the complete streets. When you're talking about changing the streets in a, in a business district and understanding you know, how that's gonna benefit overall. Uh, so that was, a, that was a, probably one of my very first lessons uh, from, from New Jersey. Uh, it's been exciting to see the support of the research community in New Jersey, the Wardy's Transportation Center tracking policies and offering technical assistance, that that's something that's been replicated in other, other states. Um, and I think just overall, it's just watching how Complete Streets evolves and matures. Oftentimes, people who are unfamiliar with it start with, well, what is it? Uh, and uh, it really is uh, something that grows and something that changes and gets better and better. Uh, and in New Jersey, it's been great to see how the state DOT has been really supporting the local governments in moving uh, in this direction. Uh, of course, we're celebrating that New Jersey, the, the state having the complete streets policy um, that was adopted in 2009. And uh, the National Complete Streets Coalition, we had created a system to rank all the policies and uh, in 2010, that policy received uh, a number one ranking uh, from, from uh, the uh, coalition. But you did not stop there. And that's what makes it so exciting. Uh, the New Jersey DOT went on to create a checklist to help in considering the needs of all users across projects. Multiple guidebooks have been 
put out. And I'm sure that probably came up uh, earlier. Some of these came up earlier today. Uh, the DOT has supported communities with trainings on both policy development and on implementation, uh, and also has instituted innovative projects. Uh, in fact, I believe it was my first ever video interview about Complete Streets was for the uh, road diet video that the New Jersey DOT put out uh, some years ago. Um, so that is watching that maturity and watching the, how a DOT can be supportive of the local governments is something that's really, really uh, been great to see. Uh, of course, the, the Northern New Jersey MPO has had a little bit of funding uh, to help with uh, Complete Streets uh, adoption and implementation. Um, and then I think the, the final piece of the, well, it's not final, because who knows what's going to happen next. But the most recent uh, evolution of complete streets uh, in your state have been around adding uh, green streets uh, to the complete streets policy so that if you're really being very explicit about how you can deal with stormwater and other uh, green elements uh, of the of complete streets, uh, that's been great to see that connection made. And then also the, em the embrace of the of Vision Zero. I know the state strategic highway safety plan for 2020 um, states the Vision Zero goal. Uh, and this is this warms our heart at the Federal Highway Administration because we have a commitment to both uh, Vision Zero and to the safe system, the underlying safe system approach. Um, and as you, I don't know if it came up today or not, probably it did. I'm sorry I couldn't join you all day. Uh, but there are six principles to a safe system approach, uh, and a few of those, of course, that no deaths are acceptable, that humans make mistakes, and that we have to deal with the fact that humans are vulnerable, and we have to make the system uh, safe from death and serious injury. There are five elements to the safe system approach, uh, and two of those elements are safe roads and safe speeds. And that is right at the center of what Complete Streets is about. So Complete Streets really is an implementation strategy uh, for a safe system. Uh, and when you talk about safe systems, sometimes people are like, well, where do I go with these concepts? One of the places you go is Complete Streets. Um, so I think that we at Federal Highways are very much in sync with, uh, with New Jersey and uh, with the, the work that's, that, that you are doing. I wanted to tell you a little bit about our Complete Streets initiative. So on top, we already had this commitment to the safe system approach, and now uh, Stephanie Pollock has asked us to really focus on Complete Streets. So we have formed a steering committee of the leadership uh, across uh, federal highways, along with a working group of subject matter experts from really every office, uh, planning, project delivery operations, uh, the, the divisions, and we are meeting weekly and forming up a plan for how we move forward on complete streets. We have, uh, uh, we're, we're, of course, safety is a primary thing that we're thinking about. Um, and how do we, how do we improve safety countermeasures? How do we uh, really change what the really concerning numbers that we've been seeing around fatalities around the country? Uh, second uh, is really the network. Uh, making sure that that we are helping create complete networks for all users and especially for the non-motorized users, transit users, people outside of automobiles who have been making up more and more of the, deaths, of the fatalities, of traffic fatalities. Uh, fortunately, both the Complete Streets really aligned with administration goals around enhancing equity uh, and also addressing climate um, because, of course, we're talking about enhancing the ability to use uh, non-emitting uh, non emitting transportation modes. So uh, all of this, we, there's lots of balls in the air, lots of pieces uh, coming together, and it's, it's, it's great to be working on all those things. Uh, we do have three strategies for bringing this all together. And the first one is really to change our own practices to make it easier for our federal aid partners to create complete streets. What are the barriers? How can we get rid of any barriers that may exist? Um, the second is to provide the technical assistance and training that we already do a lot of. And much of our work is already, of course, supportive of uh, complete streets, such as our STEP program, uh, our data analysis, 
um, lots of, of pieces to offer and we're gonna do more to try to bring that all together and help communities move in this direction so that that becomes more routine. And then the third strategy, uh, the issue we've really identified is that we don't have all the information that we need in order to really um, make steady progress. We don't know as much as we need to know about how people are traveling or about what the street network currently has. We need performance measures that will help us, help us look at our own practices, see whether or not we're making progress. Uh, and, and performance measures that other that local governments uh, can use or states can use so that they can really see uh, the progress they're making. Uh, so that's, that's how the complete streets strategy is coming together. Now, at the same time that we're planning uh, this, this uh, initiative, uh, we have this, this huge wave coming at us, we hope is coming at us, which is the federal infrastructure bill. Um, if you don't know what the final product is going to look like yet, I know all of you have been paying attention to what's going on in Congress. It's hard to know uh, what the final will be, um, but uh, it does look like there will be um, funding, more funding for safety. That's what we're very hopeful of. If it stays close to the current um, um, IIJA uh, that came from uh, out of the Senate, it's likely that there will be a lot of new, a lot of new discretionary grant programs. Traditionally, federal highways we give a lot of money through formula, but this will be a lot more discretionary grants. We will be once the bill passes, we will be working on the rollout, and it will probably happen very quickly. We usually want to be very responsive to Congress, and so we will be um, putting. There's already some pre-preparation happening uh, so that we can get started. Um, but if you are interested in uh, some of those, those uh, opportunities that we hope will come out of the bill, just keep a close eye on our webpage and on our Twitter feed. Uh, you should be hearing very quickly about um, ways that you can get engaged uh, and, and uh, potential, uh, potential opportunities. Um, our, the, the administration goals of, uh, around safety, around addressing equity and climate change, and really around transforming our transportation system um, are all uh, goals that I think will be baked into uh, many of the measures that, uh, that, that Congress is working on. So, so watch those. Uh, and in the, you could also be watching for the Complete Streets Initiative is really, <clears throat> excuse me, in its infancy, but we're hoping soon to have a web portal um, and we'll have some more activities uh, that, and we will be sure to stay in touch with you about those. Uh, some safety, we do have new uh, safety uh, information rolling out. We're gonna have a new set of safety performance measures in the next month, so be sure to watch for those. Um, and then also just know that your division uh, is ready to support you. Uh, the Federal Highways divisions are all getting on board or well on board with, uh, with complete streets and we can help you sort through. I know that it's uh, to be very, there's, there's, we have a lot of uh, technical assistance. There's a lot of, uh, it's, it's a complicated system. And so the division can be helpful uh, as, you, as you move forward. And then I wanted you to just know that, that as we are working on this, uh, we know, uh, we have Federal Highways, we know that our most valuable resource um, is, it's the communities that we work with. Uh, the communities that have been doing <clears throat> the hard work of transforming their transportation system to ensure safety for all users. Uh, we, we are really learning from you and we want to help to pull all the pieces together, help use our convening power to, uh, to spread this even further uh, across the country. And I want to thank uh, New Jersey for your early and continuing commitment to Complete Streets. Uh, and I really look forward to uh, continuing to, to work with all of you um, in, the, in my capacity at the, at the Federal Highway Administration. So thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> thank you so much for that, Barbara. I, I am just so thrilled that you were able to join us today and, and help us with our summit. And, close it out in such a positive fashion. It was great to hear all about, you know, when this whole thing started, but it's, it's even greater to see how far the Complete Streets Movement has come. 
there are still challenges ahead of us and it's good to know we have such strong partners at the federal level to support our efforts. Well, thank you. At New Jersey DOT, we are really trying to address some of the most pernicious issues on our streets. How can we make sure they provide for the needs of local residents while also serving as the logistical backbone of our state economy? How do we ensure that funds are allocated equitably and that past harms are repaired? How can we improve safety and reduce conflicts between motor vehicles and vulnerable road users? How do we maintain the functionality of our roads and streets as our population continues to grow? How can we adapt to new technologies and new travel modes? How do we implement redesigns efficiently and effectively to ensure the best possible outcomes for the dollars invested? How can we respond to immediate priorities today while also moving towards the goal of zero deaths on our roadways? And how do we change our infrastructure and travel patterns to address climate change and environmental justice when our budgets are so limited and opinions are so divided? These are very difficult questions, but asking them and addressing them is so important. We need to continue to think about the space we share and how it can be adapted to better serve New Jersey and New Jersey residents changing needs. That's what Complete Streets is for me. It's a platform to collaborate on the design of our transportation network. It's a chance for everyone to participate in building a better, safer, more accessible system as we face the coming years together. Every time we put in a traffic calming measure, an ADA accessible curb ramp, a protected bike lane, or secure bicycle parking, we are reducing the number of people risking harm on our streets and making space for trips that don't emit more greenhouse gases into our atmosphere or damage local air quality. And when we connect these types of projects together into a larger multimodal network, we are amplifying the effect of each one exponentially. Beyond the environmental benefits, I think we can all agree that complete streets are just more pleasant to be on. Some of my favorite projects are the ones that change what used to be just a road that moved cars and trucks into a real place that people want to visit. These placemaking projects compound the value of street space into something more than the sum of its parts. Many of us see streets as simply a way to get somewhere else, but Complete Streets emphasizes the other potential of that space, asking us to consider how the design of each element of our streets can serve multiple purposes. How can we create spaces that allow for human interaction and appreciation of our surroundings? How can we create spaces that don't just efficiently move people and goods, but can become places in their own right that can actually grow wealth locally? Transportation is the mortar that holds places together. Streets and roads are the veins that sustain our neighborhoods, cities, and regions. The way we move around plays such an enormous role in the success of our communities. And it is so thrilling to see the level of enthusiasm and participation from people organizing to improve them. I'm so grateful for everyone who attended the summit today and everyone who put it together. I want to thank the team at Voorhees Transportation Center, John Carnegie, Leanne Von Hagen, James Sinclair, Sean Meehan, Ashna Jain, Sam Rosenthal, Corey Hannigan, and Stephanie Crozier. They have really worked hard to make this event happen. Thanks to everyone at Civic Eye Collaborative for the amazing videos and for making all the technology run smoothly today. Ranjit Walia, Josh Petrino, Crystal Coons, and Erica Henderson-Smith. This virtual stuff is not easy. Thank you to the many wonderful panelists and speakers. And I want to thank someone who is not here this year. Charles Brown, who led the team at the New Jersey Bicycle and Pedestrian Resource Center with the previous five Complete Street Summits. He helped us sharpen our focus on issues that really matter. And we wish him all the best as he strikes out on his own. And finally, thank you to FHWA and New Jersey DOT for continuing to sponsor these efforts. It's been said already, but none of this would be possible without the enthusiastic support of leadership within the department. Now, for our last segment today, we would like to take a look back at some of the Complete Streets projects from the past decade to show just how far we've come and to inspire us to continue moving forward.
Lambertville has restored 80% of their streets with renovated sidewalks, brick crosswalks, concrete and landscaped curb extensions, street trees, ADA compliant curbing, pedestrian lighting, street furniture, speed humps, and signage alerting motorists to the presence of vulnerable street users. The city maintains a list of roads in need of repair, which is updated annually. Lambertville adopted a complete streets policy in 2012 and has worked with state agencies on regional trail projects. Montclair was the first city in New Jersey to adopt a complete streets policy, and they have long believed that inclusive pedestrian and bicycle design is key to creating community streets. In 2012, the city completed the South Park Street project, which converted the heart of Montclair into a vibrant, people-friendly street. What was once an auto-centric, underutilized space is now a destination with wide sidewalks, planting areas, and street trees that supports outdoor dining, social interaction, and balances the needs of all road users. Newark adopted a complete streets policy in 2012 and has been regularly implementing traffic calming and pedestrian safety projects. Some examples include projects on Irvine Turner Boulevard, Jones Street, Norfolk Street, Ferry Street, Broad Street, and Clinton Avenue, in which the city installed corner curb extensions with ADA curb ramps, raised intersections, road diets with center medians, textured and high visibility crosswalks, and nine miles of bike lanes as part of the National East Coast Greenway project. North Wildwood adopted a complete streets policy in 2012, formalizing its longtime commitment to streets that accommodate all users. Over the past 10 years, they've invested over 30 million in projects connecting to a multimodal path along the boardwalk. Projects include curb ramps to improve sidewalk accessibility, improvements to Surf Avenue like pedestrian lighting, parking islands, bike lanes, and enhanced crosswalks, and a two mile promenade along the seawall with ADA compliant access points. The City of Camden adopted a Complete Streets policy in June of 2013. Two years later, they installed 4.3 miles of new bike lanes, shared lane markings, and improved signage on Camden streets, establishing bicycle connections between the waterfront, downtown, newly renovated parks, and the Kramer Hill neighborhood. Local residents and city leaders believe that investment in Camden's active transportation network is improving the region's livability by connecting residential neighborhoods with commercial corridors, transit hubs, and places of work and leisure. Within the past decade, Highland Park has completed major downtown improvements along Raritan Avenue, which is the borough's main street as well as State Route 27. This included new lighting, street trees, bicycle parking, corner living rooms, benches, tables, kiosks, and plantings that provide a place for residents to stop, rest, and talk with their neighbors. Highland Park has committed to advancing complete streets in support of community goals, including economic vibrancy, environmental sustainability, and equitable access for all. Recognizing the demand for a safe walking and bicycling environment, New Brunswick adopted a complete streets policy in 2012. The city has invested in sidewalk extensions, flashing crosswalks, and intersection daylighting to create enhanced visibility for pedestrians. Building complete streets is an ongoing effort for New Brunswick as it seeks to make the city an attractive place to live and work and to encourage healthy lifestyles. Over the past several years, one of the principal initiatives at the Cape May County Planning Department and Open Space Review Board has been the development of a regional bike network. This effort has involved a number of partners, both locally and across the region. Once the initiative was underway, special funding was created for the bicycle-related projects. The program was a huge success, with over 3.2 million being awarded to local projects. Since 2014, 10 projects have been funded, including off-road bike paths, on-road bike lanes, signage, rest stops, fix-it stations, portable water stations, bike parking, trailheads, and gateway treatments. The City of Newark, with support from the New Jersey Department of Transportation, completed Bike Ironbound, 
a bicycle master plan for the city's ironbound neighborhood. Within months of finalizing the plan, the city implemented several pilot projects by integrating design templates into several scheduled roadway projects. This included over one mile of buffered bicycle lanes on the McCorder and Adams streets. The new facilities utilize high quality materials and integrate bicycle boxes, intersection markings, and green bike lanes. The Lawrence Hopewell Trail is a 22 mile multi-purpose bicycle pedestrian trail designed to be mostly off-road, family friendly, and accessible. The trail is 89% complete, but the Lawrence Hopewell Trail Corporation isn't done. They continue to work with other communities to make connections and move forward together. The Lawrence Hopewell Trail demonstrates what can happen when determined residents work together with municipalities, the county, the state, and private partners. In the summer of 2015, Milburn embarked on a Complete Streets initiative to improve pedestrian safety and economic vitality in their downtown. The project turned Complete Streets principles into reality by redesigning Main Street to slow motor vehicle traffic and improve pedestrian safety. Street crossings were reconstructed to include high visibility crosswalks, ADA compliant curb ramps, curb extensions, and road diets that allowed for more sidewalk space. The dramatic changes resulted in a safer, more comfortable downtown for everyone. Changing the interaction between bicyclists, pedestrians, and vehicles is the driving force behind Complete Streets in Morristown. Since passing its Complete Streets policy in 2012, the city has continued to grow and has decided to manage this growth so that the needs of everyone are considered. Morristown developed and adopted a checklist so officials can evaluate transportation projects, major site plan and redevelopment plans. This has made it easier to ensure adequate consideration of bicycle, pedestrian and transit needs in the planning, design, construction and maintenance of projects, including resurfacing jobs. The Ben Franklin Bridge is the iconic suspension bridge that connects Camden, New Jersey, and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It carries Interstate 676, U.S. Route 30, and the Patco High Speed Line across the Delaware River. The bridge is owned and maintained by the Delaware River Port Authority and provides connections not only for vehicles, but also for pedestrians and bicyclists. Prior to 2019, a stairwell was the only access point for people on foot. Thanks to the efforts of the DRPA, NJDOT, the William Penn Foundation, the Circuit Trails Coalition, and the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia, a 700-foot-long, 10-foot-wide, ADA-compliant ramp was installed at the eastern end of the bridge walkway. This allows cyclists and those with mobility issues to reach the bridge with ease. The ramp is an important link to the Camden Greenway, which will eventually allow for a seamless off-road route between Philadelphia and regions throughout central New Jersey. The more than 350 miles of trails that form the Growing Circuit Trails Network are designed to connect people in central New Jersey and southeast Pennsylvania. The network consists of mostly off-road paths and is accessible to people of all ages and abilities. The circuit is more than just a trail system is a transportation network for humans. It travels through rural, suburban, and urban environments and provides access to schools, businesses, residences, and more. The Circuit Trails Coalition is committed to creating inclusive public spaces and taking a stand against racism. The Middlesex Greenway is a three and a half mile shared use path along a historic portion of the Lehigh Valley Rail Corridor and is now a part of the Middlesex County Park System. The Greenway provides opportunities for residents and visitors to walk, run, bike, and observe nature in a safe and welcoming environment. There are 12 distinct, fully accessible access points in Metuchen, Edison, and Woodbridge. The trail connects a diverse array of neighborhoods to area parks, schools, shopping, and transit. In an effort to increase economic activity after the 2008 recession, Union Township initiated a streetscape project along Stuyvesant Avenue in the neighborhood of Union Center. In this two-phase project, improvements were made to the crosswalks, curb ramps, sidewalks, and lighting to create a safe and more inviting environment 
for those traveling along the corridor. These improvements have encouraged mixed-use development, which further promotes walkability. Both of these factors are essential to creating a thriving downtown area. All right, that was an amazing video. We have so much to be proud of in New Jersey. It is always so amazing to see the work done by past Complete Streets champions and excellence award winners. I'm excited to see the projects that are underway right now and might appear at our next summit in 2023. And so finally, it's time to bring today's event to a close. Thank you all so, so much for your enthusiasm and dedication to safety, accessibility, and equity on our streets. One of the best tools we have is learning from each other. So I hope everyone takes what they've learned from today's panels and videos and turns it into even more transformative projects in your own towns. I strongly urge everyone to explore some of the resources at njbikeped.org where you can also submit the projects and initiatives you've worked on for our next Complete Streets Champion Awards. Please also fill out the questionnaire at the end. It provides us with really useful information that helps us improve these conferences and plan new ones, like last month's first ever Trails and Greenways Summit. The recordings from today's panels will be uploaded to the New Jersey Bicycle and Pedestrian Resource Center website, njbikeped.org. We will provide a link to that, along with a link to the feedback questionnaire and a follow-up email, which will go out after we conclude the session today. So thank you to our summit planning and production team, all of our wonderful panelists and supporters, and thanks to all of you for coming and for hanging in there at four o'clock on a Friday afternoon, especially all you bike lane fairies out there. I can't wait to see you, really see you at the next Complete Street Summit in 2023. Take care, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Elise. <laughs> <laughs>